Holy and merciful God, in Jesus' name I come to you, praising your holy name because it is great and you are great. So I um I just I just honor your your name. I, I honor the Lord Jesus. And I ask you to forgive me of my sins, oh my Lord, so I can study this. It's, it's difficult to study today. I don't know why. I don't I don't feel any power. I don't feel any boldness. I don't feel anything at all. I cannot study like that. So I just I need you, Lord, to get this truth out. The truth is not getting out, Lord, by the Kirk, by the church. And it needs to get be it needs to 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 go out and to be proclaimed the bodily resurrection of your dear son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So I just pray for boldness, I pray for power, I pray for clarity, I pray for recollection, I pray for smoothness, I pray for these these stupid interruptions to, to, to stop. I pray for my weakness to stop. Um if it's the cold, just, just fill me with, with with vigor and energy and and just replace the, the cold and the sickness with 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 with, with vigor. Um so in Jesus' name I just come to you with, with a sluggish of a sluggishness of it all, but I just just pray that you replace it, replace it with yourself, Lord. <clears throat> In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, guys, this is the crew that got this is the key, and I don't know if you heard that prayer, but um, I feel sluggish today. I feel hot. I feel slow. I feel weak. I just prayed for the Lord's uh, power and recollection and and boldness and and energy. Because I, I just did a few takes. And it's like Alfred Hitchcock, you know what I mean? And it just it didn't come out right. So I, I cannot study without boldness and power. We need to get this truth out and we need to get it out now. That Jesus Christ, our Lord, was bodily raised from the dead. Don Necron. From the dead, ek Don Necron or ek Necron. You understand what I'm saying? So that's just it. Well, we're trying to find every verse that has to do clearly, cogently, and you know, and carefully. We have we have verses of scripture in the New Testament that clearly teach, okay, all right, that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. I'm not talking about resurrection one and two. I'm not talking about those resurrections. They will happen in their proper time, and they're very important to study. However, I'm looking. Uh, for verses, I'm combing the New Testament from stem to stern, from Matthew to Revelation, trying to find, okay, um, uh, verses that clearly state that Jesus was raised from the dead, or that he raised himself from the dead, or he will, or whatever the case may be, that has to do with him specifically and only, okay? You understand? Now, sometimes there's a combo of things. Sometimes we are said to be raised with him, and I'll take those. I, I don't mind taking those. Okay, I don't mind, but um, that's what we're doing. And I found another one. Um, the only books that I have to study are, um, you know, you know, you know, is um, the book of Hebrews and the book of uh, Luke. All right, and um, there might be some other verse, verses of the resurrection of Jesus sprinkled throughout some other letter or something like that. But basically, in the book of Romans, I have to go through uh, chapter 11 through the end of the book. So basically, three books that I have to that I have to go through. Um, one that I have to finish, you know, Romans and uh, about the resurrection of Jesus. And... Um, and uh, Hebrews, I have to finish that. Not that I never heard it before. I just, but, but you know, I'm trying to find verses that have to do with the resurrection of Jesus only. You understand what I'm saying? So that's just it. So we're getting to the. It's kind of sad. We're getting to the climax of our study. Uh, so Matika Anastasis to Jesu Christu Guriu came on the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord. Now I found another one in Luke's Gospel, but all the way in chapter nine. Okay, so the first eight chapters don't don't mention the resurrection of Jesus whatsoever. Okay, now it might be there in shadow or type and figure, something like that, but it doesn't mention it stark starkly. That's even a word, you know, in a stark way. But Luke nine twenty two does. So we check it out in NASB. Okay, thank God it didn't lock up. So that's just a deal. Okay, so that's just it. My baby Anna Devane is with me, but my wife is with me, but she's asleep. Okay, at the wheel. And um, <clears throat> my other uh, child is with me, Sean Donnelly. So that's just it. Now, you may say, you have you have two children that are named Sean Donnelly and Anna Devane? Yes. 
<laughs> That's the, I admire those characters a lot. And uh, so, and, and, and the names are very, very uh, uh, gracious names. You know, uh, Anna means grace or, and beautiful, and then um, and then Sean means uh, God is gracious. So that's just a deal. Verse, uh, verse 20, 22. Okay, let's read verse 22 from chapter 9 of Luke's Gospel. The Gospel Kata Lucan. Saying, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected okay, by the elders and uh, chief priests and scribes and be killed and be... Okay, and be raised up on the third day. Okay, so it mentions the cross because, you know, the instrumentality of his death was the cross. Okay, be killed. And on the third day, he will, he, uh, it says over here that he would be raised from the dead. Okay, raised. Raised is the word. Now, this is talking about Jesus' uh, upcoming death and uh, resurrection. Now, he's, he's, uh, he, he just asked the disciples, and, it, and it's something that is found and recorded, you understand what I'm saying, in chapter 16 of Matthew's Gospel. Okay, you understand? He was asking them also there, uh, who do men say that I am? And, and they were saying, uh, some people say... Uh, that you're Elijah. Some people say uh, 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 um, uh, uh, this and that, and what and whatever the case may be. And Peter says that thou art the Christ. The correct answer. You understand what I'm saying? Now, in, in this in this chapter, what's missing, okay, is the declaration of Jesus uh, saying that uh, Peter is a a a stone. Uh, built upon a rock. Not that he's the rock, but he's built upon a rock. You know what I'm saying? And Kenneth then actually speaks about in his uh, history, um, is in Greek. Um, Kenneth, uh, the great uh, uh, Greek historian, actually mentions all kinds of rocks. And Manti actually um, <clears throat> took upon that and, and built, no pun intended, a, a uh, beautiful booklet entitled Was Peter a Pope? And in it, he mentions a lithos and, and Petra and Petras. The differences between, okay, those uh, three types of rock. You understand what I'm saying? But getting back to this. <clears throat> so Jesus tells them that he has to suffer many things. Okay. Other scriptures indicate that he was scourged and he was spat upon. And, 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 um, and uh, that he will be killed also. And on the third day, rise from the dead. You understand what I'm saying? Now, why did it have to be three days? Well, he was busy preaching in Shield. It's not a participle there, but it's a AIA, Aris active, uh, Aris indicative active. You understand what I'm saying? That he preached. Ekeruxen is the Greek word from Keruso, which means I preach or proclaim or whatever the case may be. So he was in Shield preaching for three days and three nights. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, that's just it. Now, that's recorded in verse uh, 19 of chapter 3 of First Peter. Now, let's read this again. This is a quite clear saying. Okay, probably a part of the book. We'll check it out. We'll, we'll check out the full Greek construction. This is the full Greek construction. The Son of Man must suffer many things. Okay, must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and uh, chief priests and the scribes and be killed and, and be raised up. Okay, as a Greek P on the third day. Day. So this is another verse of scripture that we found. Okay, it clearly teaches that Jesus Christ had to be raised from the dead. Okay, you understand? What? Or was raised from the dead, or whatever the case may be. We're looking back at it. You understand what I'm saying? This is glorious. I mean, so you have verse six of chapter twenty-four of Luke, and you have you have a couple. I think in in, in chapter twenty-four, um, I have a study on that. I have several on uh, chapter twenty-four. You understand what I'm saying? In particular, verse thirty-nine. Hi, Milo. And so we're trying to find, and we just found Mark chapter, you know, verses that indicate Jesus' bodily resurrection from the dead. You understand what I'm saying? Um, uh, chapter 8, chapter 9, and chapter 10. <clears throat> you understand? We saw verses in there. Okay? So we just, we just found some uh, verses of Scripture indicating the resurrection of Jesus. We also found in the Acts of the Apostles... Okay, all right. Scores of time, where scores of times where Jesus is said to be, 
raised from the dead. Okay, verse 3 of chapter 1, chapter 2, verses what? 24, 31, and 32, chapter 3, verse 15, chapter 4, verse 10, chapter 5, verse 30, chapter 10, verses around 40 and 41, uh, chapter uh, 13, four times there, okay? In uh, uh, verse 30, 33, 34, 37, and chapter 17, a couple of times probably there, huh? And then chapters uh, 25 and 26, verse 19 and 23, respectively. Those are all, we have to master these. We have to find out where these things are. Not only the Greek, but we have to locate them first. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? So we can get into the English or whatever the case may be, Spanish, German, Dutch, or whatever the case may be, and, and, and get to, into the original languages and talk about Anastasis. Anastasis, you understand what I'm saying? And talk about Anastami, and talk about Egero, and talk about Zone. You understand? That's just the deal. Well, if a Jehovah's Witness comes and says, okay, where does, where does it say clearly that Jesus was raised from the dead? Well, what are we going to do? We need to know where these things are. And that's what the study is designed to do. It's designed to let us know where these things are, get into the background of the original languages, and talk to the witnesses or anybody else that doesn't believe in the resurrection of Jesus. Islam, I don't care who. And that's just a deal. All right. So let's get into the Greek. Okay. Because the Greek is the standard. You understand? Nothing else is. So that's just it. All right. So let's get to, okay, Luke chapter 9. Uh, Luke chapter 9 and verse, let me see here. Luke chapter 9 and verse 22. Luke chapter 9 and verse 22. All right, now let me just say something real quick. Um, every time an article appears, or the Greek word chi, because it appears thousands of times. I mean, the article appears like 20,000 times, for God's sake. You understand what I'm saying? So it, it's, uh, it's called, uh, the article is called the weak demonstrative. Okay? It's more than just the. And it could point to uh, several things. Um, it could be used for special definiteness. It could be used as a, as a pronoun, that one or the one or whatever the case may be. There's 24 of them in an article paradigm. There's no indefinite article. So, you know, I don't want to mention, I, I want to mention them, but I don't want to get into them every time I see them. And the Greek word chi can be translated into uh, and also even both. It's a computative connective. It's a linking word. It's a conjunction. Okay. So that's just the deal. They're very important, and that's just the deal. Now, um, so let me get there. It says over here, having said, okay, so that's uh, that's an aorist tense, though, but it's a participle, aorist participle active, okay? So we're going to see some constructions here. A pon. So um, uh, the omega and nu is not a genitive case ending, <laughs> obviously, okay? Um, it is... Uh, um, now it can be in participles though, so you have to be careful with that. It can be, you understand? It can be, uh, it can be that. But this is nominative though. This is omega and nu, okay, in participles as a participial morphine. Let's put it like that. Is uh, is is um, is a um, active uh, participial morphine, okay? So that's just the deal. So omega and nu, you see it in uh, haon. And um, uh, <clears throat> Labon, Huparcon, Zone. I mean, so you see it all over the place. Okay, so Omega Nu is very important in part as a participial morphine because that's what it is. Okay, um, so uh, participles are uh, verbal adjectives, and they could either work, uh, adver you know, adjectivally or adverbally. Okay, and the article is a clue how it's working. Okay, so apon means uh, having a said. Okay, having said. Okay, apon. Now, I spelled out uh, epsilon, iota, p, omega, nu. Now, they called ni, the nu. You understand know what I'm saying? And then you have hati here. And hati is uh, it's not translated above. And uh, says it is uh, necessary. And that's, and that's day almost every time. Okay, day. And it has a capital delta here, which is a triangle, and epsilon iota after that. So day means it is necessary or whatever, you know, it needs be, or whatever the case may be, how the people are going to translate this, you know. 
And then you have an article. I mentioned them already. Ton. This is an accuser of the case, a case of limitation as to extent. Sun Huion. Okay. Tan Huion. Construction is also found and recorded in Hebrews uh, 1 8. Tan Huion. <clears throat> and it says over here, to the Son of Man, to Anthropo, the Son of Man. That's the greatest title for Jesus in the New Testament. There's nothing greater than that. Okay. Unless you're calling him Yahweh or. or, or or uh, some title like that. You understand what I'm saying? And that came from the lips of uh, of God the Father. Uh, in verse, and you see it in verse 10 of chapter 1 of Hebrews again. Okay. Uh, quote, he quoted uh, Psalm 102. And the Tetragrammaton is found like 9 or 10 times there. As a matter of fact. You understand? Many things. Pala. Many things. P, which, typ which is typifying a, a Greek structure. Omicron nowadays called Omicron, double lambda, and then you got uh, alpha there. Many things to suffer. Now, wherever you see a two in front of a uh, uh, of, uh, of above in English, that's a uh, uh, that's a uh, infinitive uh, construction, and uh, and so that's just it. Now, um. Let's just poke the bear here, okay? Let me see if I can get this more perfectly. Um, let's see what happened to this here. Uh, let me see if I could just put it down a little bit. That guy didn't lock up again, okay? Um, let me see. Scroll it up a little bit. Okay, so let's poke the bear, okay? And this is... Grammatical category says over here tense is the aris tense and mood and this is uh, infinitive so verbal noun okay and so that's just it now um, <clears throat> to safa now how do you know this is an infinitive when you're looking at it in Greek or well, you got in infinitive forms within the verb that will let you know the ain uh, the group of letters, epsilon, iota, nu, that's an infinitive morphine. One of them, anyway. You have a whole host of them. Psi, ni, just I. You understand what I'm saying? And, 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 a, and, a, and a bag full of them. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? So that's how you know that this is an infinitive, a verbal noun. You understand? Uh, pathane. Um, atusafa. Okay, atusafa. Uh, let me see. It's a conjunction over here. Uh, and uh, translating Kai. That's Kai there. Uh, to be rejected. And that's another infinitive. To be rejected. This is an Aris infinitive passive construction. You understand? Apa da ki maste nai. And the nai here is an infinitive construction. We already saw ain, and this is another one, nai, okay? Nu alpha iota, okay? To be rejected. Apa da ki ma ste nai, okay? Very long Greek word. By, and that's apa, it's translating apa, a preposition. The, and that's stone, so you, so you know something that's coming up, it has to be in the plural. What's coming up has to be in the plural, tone, and in the genitive as well. Elders, okay, pres, uh, pres, buteron, okay, that's where you get the word presbytery from. And, translating kai, it will be y in, in Hebrew, or whatever other pronunciation, chief priests. Archereon, chief priest. And Greek word kai, scribes have to be next over here, scribes. Grammateon, grammateon. And Greek word kai, okay, to be killed. And that's an infinitive, another infinitive. So you have a, a few infinitives over here. Now, when I see that Jesus Christ um, was killed or had to be killed or was going to be killed, whatever tense you want to use, you understand what I'm saying, that the Bible uses, 
Um, you always remember about the Hebrew word karaf, which is found and recorded in chapter 9 of, of Daniel's prophecy. You know, a violent death it was supposed to be. But the spirit wasn't killed. The body was killed. You understand what I'm saying? The spirit wasn't killed. He was busy preaching in Sheol. You understand what I'm saying? So how can he be annihilated, you understand, if he was busy uh, preaching in Sheol? You see? It's a contradiction. You know, so, you know, the, the tower is a walking contradiction. You understand what I'm saying? A watchtower. That's what it is, by the way, to be killed. <clears throat> this is uh, A and P. Uh, uh, Aris, uh, infinitive uh, passive construction. Apakata. Uh, the nai and the nai, okay, is a okay, um, infinitive morphine again to be killed, okay. Apa kata katan the nai and Greek word kai. This is the, the bulk of our study right in this in this upcoming uh, 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 what on the and that's. Day on the it says over here third or trite on the third day hemera to be raised. Now this is interesting. This is another infinitive sighting found and recorded and in our study. Okay, we saw maybe four of them so far. Okay, infinitive constructions. One glaring one was in verse 9 of chapter 20 of John's Gospel, the Gospel of Kata Ioannin, where Anastani is there, okay, in verse 9. Usually, uh, when you're talking about the resurrection chapters in the Gospels, you're talking about Aris, um, uh passive constructions, okay, you understand? with a with a theta and eta at the end. Now, these call called uh, feet and eta, you understand what I'm saying? But this is another um, infinitive that has to do with Jesus' resurrection from the dead. Egerthenai. Okay. This is an Aris. Uh, this is a, and this is a passive as well. Aris passive. But it's an infinitive. Okay. So Aris uh, uh, infinitive passive construction. You see the data and the eta there. Okay, fine. But you see the nai, and that makes it an infinitive. Okay. So Egerthenai. Uh, you understand? I'm a love. That is here, that is here, my love, that is here. And that's basically the last Greek word from Egero, tagged by 1453, Egero. Epsilon, gamma, epsilon, iota, rho, omega. You understand what I'm saying? And this, this word is a famous word for Jesus' resurrection from the uh, uh, ek, ato, necron, or just necron. You understand what I'm saying? And the other one is ana, anistemi, which is a me verb, and the other one uh, is a noun, anastas, uh, anastasis. And the statement is a verb. You understand what I'm saying? So that's just a deal all across the board. So again, a ghetto is in our study. A ghetto is a liquid future is found and recorded in verse 19 of chapter 2 of John's Gospel. So basically, a ghetto, necron, anastasis, and a zone are the main vein Greek words that have to do with Jesus' resurrection from the dead. Okay, those are the, the main ones, and the main ones are basically anastasis and um, a ghetto. If when you want, if you want to boil it down to two, but if you want to boil it down to let's say five, those Greek words are very, very, very important. And and throw in there, um, which is not found a lot, only in Revelation so far in our study, nekras, as a, a nominative, not a genital plural. Okay, it's usually found as a genital plural, necron, nekras, into necron. But when it has to do with Jesus' bodily condition of death before the resurrection, it switches from necron to necras. When you're talking about him being extracted from Sheol, from among the dead ones, it switches from necras to necron in the genital plural, because he came from among, uh, uh, you know, the abode of the dead ones. You understand what I'm saying? So that's a switcheroo from necras to necron or necron to necras. You understand? And in, as a nominative is found in Revelation chapter 1 and chapter 2, okay? So that's just it. It's found like about maybe uh, two, three, or four times as, as a nominative. But that's about it. We haven't seen it like that in our studies. You know, you know the, the condition of Jesus' uh, bodily uh, uh, body, 
before uh, resurrection. Okay? Two completely di different meanings because of the construction. Okay? One has to do with Jesus' clinically dead body before the resurrection at cross, and the other has to do with his uh, being in Sheol in the lo location of the abode of the dead, Matthew chapter 12, verse 40, and uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 9, and him being extracted from that place, from the heart, the Greek word cardia, of the of, the lower parts, the regions of the of. You understand what I'm saying? That's, that's just the deal. Well, basically, that's our study. It's a very easy study and a very easy verse to put into mind. Verse 22 of chapter uh, 9. Do we have a verse 22 in our study so far? I don't think so. So we can't clone it with another one. Okay, we can't clone it. You know, we cloned uh, Mark chapter 9, verse 9 with uh, John chapter 20, verse 9. And we cloned uh, Luke chapter uh, 24, verse 6 with the other uh, uh, synoptic gospel uh, sightings. Uh, 16, verse uh, 6, and uh, what did I say? Did I say, uh, Mark, let me see, uh, let's just say it again. All the synoptic gospels in the last chapter has uh, verse 6 saying that Jesus was raised from the dead. So we cloned all of them. That's kind of easy, okay? So that's just the deal. <clears throat> but I don't think we can clone this one, so we just have to put it in our minds as much as we can and let the Holy Spirit... Uh, crank it out of us uh, if we need it. Well, this is Angelo Quinones giving glory to God the Father, to the Lord Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Spirit. God is not the God of the dead, Necron, but of the living. And that means that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were very much alive at the time that Jesus said those words. And that also means that Jesus had a God, not because he had something to do with Catesis being a creature. No, Catesis doesn't have to do with Jesus at all. Neither uh, 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 Poyel. You understand know what I'm saying? It doesn't have to do with Jesus being a creature at all. He, Jesus is not a creature. He's creator. You understand know what I'm saying? And that's just it. <clears throat> and um, he's not a creature. So that's just the deal. We're the, we're the creatures. You know what I'm we have to bow down to him. To him you understand know what I'm saying? And so, but, uh, but he had a God because God is not the God of the dead. God is the God of the living. And since Jesus is alive... Jesus has a God. And not only that, he has a God because he serves God. He's the, he's the branch, that branch found and recorded in Zechariah chapter 3, verse 8, all across the board. You understand what I'm saying? That's why he has a God. We agree that Jesus has a God, but the why is the big difference and the big key. Um, you know, uh, it's the big difference between us evangelicals, with a capital E, by the way, believing evangelicals, let's put it like that. You know, B, C, T, E, S, you know, born again, uh, Christian, uh, Trinitarian, evangelical saints. And again, with a capital E, not your garden variety evangelical. You know what I'm saying? Compared uh, us with, with the those okay, that don't believe, well, that's just the deal. You know, that's the deal all across the board. And this is another verse of scripture that indicates... Okay, uh, that Jesus was raised from the dead. And this is, is, is another verse of scripture that indicates nothing about Jesus' soul being an, annihilated. Nothing. There's nothing, it's not, it's not there. The teaching is not there, so I don't know why the tower, he's on teaching something that's not in the Bible. You see what I'm saying? Please subscribe to my channel. Please give me a thumbs up and please leave uh, a comment on the screen. Now, um, uh, to be raised is an infinitive, a verbal noun, an infinite uh, uh, what, if you will, and uh, it's an aorist, and uh, you have epsilon, gamma, epsilon, rho, theta, eta, nu, alpha, iota. The theta and eta, now these called theta and eta, is uh, an infinitive morph, is, 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 a, is a aorist passive morphine, uh, and then you have the nigh being an infinitive morphine or form or shape. It's from the Greek word morphe, you know, morphine. And then you have the stem, eger. Okay, um, and that's just it, without the iota. So this is very, very important. Let me just poke the bear here, okay, and check out the definition before I close. The definition of egero is to awake arouse b to raise up take care guys bye bye